governing board and the implementation board at this time we do not have a quorum for the governing board and I will adjourn the meeting to the potential October 17th um, governing board slash implementation board meeting we actually chair, we take a vote for the members who are in attendance would be appropriate okay. even though you don't have a quorum let's take a vote for members who are in attendance and, and make a motion Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. I don't even know who's here. <laughs> you have to second it. One second. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. That's it. Invitation morning. And so are we doing a roll call for that, Michelle? Sure, board member Sucker. Yes. Wasserman. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, if there were only one of you, we wouldn't have had to go through that. Okay, so we are continuing that. I will give it over okay. to Chair Wasserman. There we Wasserman. go. Thank you, and, and you run a heck of a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I may say so. <laughs> I thought I had the record, but not. Well, you're not technically adjourned. No, we're continuing. So that's, yeah. that's right, so it's not the shortest meeting yet. All right, wonderful. Um, we're going to move on. Chair, where can we go? One, we can prove the minutes. Governing uh, board, governing board. Oh, implementation right board. We have to go down to implementation board action. Um, we'll take a roll call. Board members Tucker? Here. Ennis? Here. Vegas? Here. Wasserman? Here. Schmidt? Here. Rosado? Here. 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 Any public comments? Seeing none. Now we'll move on to implementation board action. It's the consent items. Um, I have number three that I'm pulling, and we have four and five, unless anybody else wishes to pull four or five. Nope, and I don't... Sure. Yes, I was going to ask if we had any speaker cards on any items, but we'll, we'll go from there. Go ahead. I have a correction to the staff report for item five. Uh, the second page is page 37 of our staff report. Uh, refers to a approximately $8,000 uh, payment that uh, yep. one of will be reversed for in conjunction with website. That number is actually $10,000 that was adjusted late in the, in the process of the Pass it quick before it goes to 12. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I can take all kinds of shots with Mayor Tate on, can't I? <laughs> what do you think, Dennis? Yep? Yeah. All right. All right, good. Um, okay. So we, need to we can approve motion. four and five if I have a motion. So moved. Thank okay. you. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Vera, can I ask you to step out, please? We're going to discuss item number three. Oh, sure. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them, but otherwise, I'll... Thank you. Thank you. Item number three is the agreement with the City of San Jose for legal services and the recommended action we have is for approval. Um, I wanted to bring up to this group that there were some, as chair of the implementation board, there were some concerns raised to me, brought forth to me. Um, I'll we'll just be blunt here regarding our um, current legal situation. And I wanted to give anyone on the board an opportunity to express any more concerns they may have. Uh, the concerns that were brought forth to me were concerns about the timeliness of documents being presented, um, brought forth in a timely manner so that things could be um, addressed and, and looked into. It appears, that's from, from, one, ci from one city, um, it appears that item has been resolved. Where's Debbie? Debbie, where are you? Oh. Debbie, I want to thank you for your recent involvement, stepping in to help move things along. With uh, Ken, Ken was away, I understood. He stepped in. And I tried. I just hope you stay with us. His feet are bigger than mine. His shoes are bigger than <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying I hope you hang around for uh, nine more years. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. 
All right. Um, so that issue was brought up. Another issue that was brought up in confidence, I don't need to share, but I'm just going to say there were some concerns raised. And there are options. There are alter alternatives. Um, if we don't wish to go either with with San Jose in this instance and we want to go somewhere else, we do have alternatives. If we feel the issues that were raised are no longer issues, that they've been resolved and talked over, um, which appears to, to be the case um, at this time. It's, Seems some issues got discussed and I, I think worked worked out. But then if they're worked out, they worked out. Okay. And there so, is apparently, I'm, I'm, I assume we can terminate for convenience with notice, it looks like. Okay. Okay. And this contract, I think, is through June 30th, the right. fiscal year of next year. Right. So that's, that's there. So I just wanted to, to bring that up. I thought it was my responsibility as chair when issues were called and brought to my attention that I bring them forth in this, in this venue. So that's what I've done. And if there is no more discussion, um, why don't we ask Vera back in, please. Roland, would you ask Vera back in? And I'll look for a motion to approve item number three. Approved. Motion made, motion seconded. Any further discussion? None. And Vera, we just approved item number three unanimously. So that concludes our consent item items. We now move on to number six, but the number six item needed governing board approval to give us authority to take action regarding this item. So the suggestion that I would make for your consideration is that um, we push this off to our October 17th or 18th, October 17th meeting. We have a, a meeting scheduled then that will be publicly noticed and, and we'll, we'll go through all of that. But I think we're calling that a special meeting. Is that correct, Vera? Yeah, actually, um, what we need to do is have you as chair call a special meeting on October 17th of the implementation board. And then we can continue this item to October 17th. OK. And I hope many of you had that on your calendars already. I had it on mine. I see other people shaking their heads. They had it on theirs as well. So as chair, I, I will call for a special meeting October 17th, same time, same place. Uh, the implementation board and prior to our meeting, the governing board will meet. They can hear that item and presumably give us authority to take action on it. Commissioner Smith, did you have a question? Yeah, um, it looks like today, might, maybe I'm fantasizing, but today might be a short meeting. Uh, is it worthwhile getting into some discussion on this item even if we're not? We're not authorized to take action. If you wish to discuss something now, you can. The reason I was opting not to discuss it now is when it's brought back to us on the 18th, that we will be discussing it again. Um, we may have members there that aren't here, aren't here now, so we're going to have to discuss it again anyway. If you want to be heard today here, we're going to, Brian, we're going to hear it and discuss it anyway. Okay. I'm just not a big fan of discussing things twice. Okay. But if there's something you, for instance, if there's some questions you want answered for staff to bring back and have at that meeting, that would be appropriate. Uh, no, I don't have anything right now, so I'll go ahead. Okay. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes, I Mr. Lazar. Maybe staff can either answer now or bring back. On page uh, number 63, uh, there's a policy that provides that the following are required findings, one through six. Number four, the impacts of the pro proposed activity do not deplete the amount of take curves to such an extent that not enough is available for future covered activities. I guess my question would be is how will we know that? How is that going to be tracked, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Ken, can you respond to that? Uh, very, again, the brief explanation which is that the plan has a total amount of take right. and in the annual report process, it becomes, it starts in the second year. The, the, that is an issue that we need to address. How many participants have entity, how much cake will they allocate to them, and then what are the how that relate to the total amount of cake available. The plan anticipated that there will be participants special entities, some of them will so you use cake, but for projects within the urban area where all of the land is assumed to be consumed in some way or another, they actually would have used so only, it's really only the unincorporated areas that become an issue in terms of total state. Uh, there, there's some nuances to that, but, but I think the, certainly it would be from my from what I understand, there would be probably many, many years before we get to 
that uh, regional level will be the signers. So, but there, there will or are uh, processes in place to track that before yes. we get to a situation where we go, oh my God, we've given away too much and now we've got something really well. Okay. Thank you. And I can ask that question again next week. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so that uh, we move on past item number six. And again, anybody, anybody behind me, just one second, if I may. Anybody behind me from the public that wishes to speak on items six, seven, eight, please let me know. I'll go <clears throat> something. You know, we don't have cards here, whatever you wish. But I, I think we're good until I hear something different. Yes? I'm leaving you the motion to continue six to the special meeting call. Motion to continue. Mo motion to continue. Second. Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. I may note one thing for the record, Mr. Fitzgerald from uh, BTA noted that there is a typo in some of these resolutions where we call NEPA the Na National Environmental Protection Act instead of the National Environmental Policy Act. Ah. That will be corrected everywhere where it appears for the next meeting. Thank you, Mr. Fitzwater. Sure. Thank you very much. All right, item number seven in our agenda here is the establishment of the Public Advisory Committee and the recommended action is a resolution establishing the PAC and related rules and regulations. And Ken, are you going to give us a report? The uh, this report is a follow-up on the implementation board discussion at the last meeting where your action, the direction has been published in the resolution. Um, there are no issues that we are aware of in terms of the conflict or other problems with what uh, occurred at the last meeting. Um, so if you still find issues you want to change, um, address whatever that is certainly with your client. This does reflect the last meeting. Thank you for an excellent report. Let me ask. Did All right, you, yes. I'm Please sorry. go ahead, Commissioner Did Tucker, you, and then Lazat. <laughs> When you uh, framed this, did you frame it off of the Contra Costa County one? Or um, no. we had talked about that in, like we several months ago. Contra Costa County and it may have a very different structure okay. for the special energy and for our public advisory committee. In fact, many of their members are agency members for the local water district and the county and et cetera. And we went a very different direction. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Member Lazat. Thank you. Ken, um, it, or Vera, is there any, uh, any language in here that would preclude the chair or vice chair from being elected to more than one year terms? Uh, I didn't read that there was. I don't believe so. Okay. No. Okay. The term limitations are only on the, the two or sure. consecutive year terms, um, but not for the chair and vice chair. Okay. Unless you desire to add that. No, no, I just wanted to make sure because I know on some of our advisory committees, you know, you get somebody who just really is doing a bang up job and, and the group wants to continue to have that person be the chair. I didn't want any prohibition to that happening if you've got a good group uh, and they're, they're working well together. Um, then under seven, uh, on page 105, item 17, I know it says the order of business can be changed. Um, I would just suggest that the public comment be moved up after the roll call. Rather than having. Thank you. Any other comments or suggestions? I've got a question. Stalling. Yes. Um, people for the initial appointment are. Are they, are we, when we say, for example, environmental community, are we seeking from environmental groups to nominate people, or how are we nominating people for the initial appointment? We will send out a very wide based solicitation of application, one application form or that. The intent here was not so much to formally solicit uh, recommendations from environmental groups. That is very appropriate, but to, in the final selection process, uh, maintain this general balance between environmental and business. So, uh, I had a conversation, for example, with Melissa Kippers at Green Belt Alliance uh, some time ago, and they may well 
decide among themselves that they want to propose something or propose to be. But that is not required, they're not limited, they don't have to do that. So it's self-selecting. Yes. I was trying to find the place where I saw about the um, the frequency of the meeting. So it says quarterly, but if and needed, it can be more often than that, right? Yes. Okay. I didn't. Yeah, I couldn't. The minimum would be quarterly meetings. We want to be able to figure out specific dates in line with issues that are coming to the implementation and are looking for. So we want certainly to be, for example, a budget. That meeting needs to be tied to the sequence of review of having a budget and then reviewing the budget, for example. Uh, and the board may well change your budget year the discussion of that. So at that point, the board advisory committee is still in the discussion for you. Okay, thank you. It just seemed like there was a lot of action for them to take with only you know quarterly meetings. Just wanted to make sure they can have additional meetings if needed. Well, Member Tucker, one of the things is that um, because of the Brown Act, ask you to, set, um, to create regular meetings, a regular meeting schedule, we need to do that because we're assuming that this, this committee will be making regular recommendations to you and that they're subject to the Brown Act. And also just a reminder when we, when we send out the um, notices for interest for people to apply, that they will also likely have to file a form 700, some form of conflict of interest reporting, and so that will be included in that solicitation as well. Okay. Just notice that that's, that will be a requirement. And we'll get back to you with what exactly that requirement will be. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, I'll look for a motion to adopt the resolution. So moved. Uh, moved by Member Fitzwater, seconded Member Schmidt. Any discussion? Yes. The motion includes the change in item 17 to the public comments to follow the rule. Thank you. 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 Thank you which is the Executive Officer Position Skills and Recruitment. And Debbie, are you applying for this? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we no, know that we wanted to look like Kathy Tate from the room. I thought we made this <laughs> Damn, I thought I had it done. All right. Um, anyone from the public wishing to speak? It's your chance, Debbie. <laughs> no? All right. Uh, Ken, please take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, this has been, this is another in a series of uh, agenda items on the same topic. So we talked about this in the past two meetings, in fact. The objective is to, uh, by later this year, be head out for a recruiting process. The objective then is to have an executive officer be, be appointed and hopefully available uh, by June of next year with my contract. And, you said my title was interim executive officer. Um, to that extent, what has happened in this process is that we've had three issues, and they've become very specific issues and needing specific resources. One is, uh, we talked about this somewhat at the last meeting, there are a variety of alternatives and pros and cons in terms of how this position, which at the beginning of this is most likely to be the only position, whether it remains in a contract position as, as I am, or whether it becomes a staff position, and how that all fits together for the benefit of the etc. And that is a very specialized topic. And Vera has been uh, in discussions with a law firm with that expertise. And I would expect that quite soon we will have an agreement on that. we to provide an update in a moment. Um, then there are two other parts of this. The, the second part is advising on compensation issues. Again, this is a not a weird position, but it's not a conventional position in terms of looking at other organizational structures. Uh, you have parts directors, parts of recreation directors, you have general managers of land trusts, whatever thing. That may be somewhat comparable. But there needs to be some compensation advice in all of this. And that gets back to how the position is structured in terms of salary and benefits, what benefits, how that all, that page gets together. 
And then third is work uh, with work by a consultant and we work with the uh, implementation board to conduct the recruitment effort. Uh, a head effort to use the town of term. The second and the third items, the, the issue on compensation and the issue of recruitment are logically part of one page. Uh, we will be sending out a RFQ request for qualifications uh, in the very near future. Uh, one of the items that is needed before that is for this board to take action today uh, to, get, uh, to do it on the skills. You've identified critical skills, desired skills, that goes into the request for qualifications. It's not the end of that process, but I want to make sure that what goes out to the recruitment firms and then get passed into the process after the request for qualifications. Uh, my hope is to bring this back to the implementation board in October, and if not, then certainly in November. Uh, the board appointed a four-person committee, uh, Council Member Herrera, uh, Board Member Schmidt, Board uh, of Staff Member uh, Little, and Supervisor Wasserman, to be a, a committee that would work on the recruitment process and what <laughs> That's what the minute you, you volunteer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't really they forced you. Uh, <laughs> the best law, somebody needs a, needs a help. Uh, but the point is that what we want to do is, is suggest to that committee that they be involved in the interview process. Because the, the, the recruiting firm is going to work for you. You have you need to be comfortable with the resource of the approach and, and it's not so much a staff issue, it is a an issue for the board members. And we will try to, uh, if at all possible, to pull back together by October. We have gone out any number of times asking for uh, the staff to suggest names of recruiters, companies that have experience with parks, open space type positions. Um, and we were able to get two names, so that's, that's my list right now. Patrick and McKinney in Sacramento and CPS HR Consulting, uh, Stuart Stokes. Sarkoff, I guess it is, uh, who's an executive recruiter also in Sacramento. Those are the two names that have come up. Uh, and if someone has a third or more name to add to that list, I would appreciate it very, very quickly because my hope is to get that RFQ out of the mail by the next week. Thank you. So the action today is, is the skill set, um, the list of skills. Uh, in that regard, uh, there was a discussion at the last meeting regarding adding critical skill regarding negotiating solutions to complex issues. Uh, that is the new number seven of those critical skills on page 109 of the Thank you. I've got some thoughts on this, but I, I want to look to my committee first for any thoughts they have. Commissioner Lazat. I just had a question. Uh, that the last paragraph on the page that's numbered 108, which is the first paragraph of the memo, um, th that first sentence here, a de the decision or an organization location will directly influence the structuring of the executive officer's compensation package. I have no idea why that's relevant. Um, brief bit of history. We started out with a desire to have this position so we realized at the beginning that to have a single staff position in an organization would require lots of other resources to support that, personnel and, and all sorts of other things. And the agency wouldn't have that. It wasn't efficient to have it. Can I stop you right there? You're, you're talking about the discussion we had last right. time. You're not talking about the fact that this organization that offices are in Morgan Hill. No. Oh, that's what I thought this That's what I thought this said. That's what it said, too. I thought you were saying whether you lived in Morgan Hill. You know, I thought the same thing. It's a half an hour from downtown San Jose. Why is that a problem? We've often a bit of jargon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Who has it? And I think we all It is a consultant position. And as a college instructor. But Ken, to her point, when she read it, I know the two of us, we interpreted the way that she did, you know, must like wine. Not to use the abbreviation for what's in our names. 
Good. When I, when I vote to have 40 before October 17th actually addresses this issue, so I just want to briefly explain what I've been asking law firms to give me an estimate on, you know, doing work. Sure. For, um, and under $10,000, can, can, can sign the contract rapidly, you know, we can do that, um, is to advise you what it would take, you know, clearly we know how to do a contract for a consultant. What would it take us to do in-house, for example? And what would it take us to perhaps have, you know, have another public agency um, provide some of the benefits and through contract with them? And so I'm asking them for, for them to advise us on all three potential methods of you filling this position. And it doesn't mean that from the outset you need to fill it a certain way. It could be, for example, by contract, or it could be, you know, with without certain benefits and you add benefits, the executive director then goes out and starts to create this organizational structure, you know, while they're there. For example, if you wanted to contract with PERS or something because you may have future employees, something like that, you may not start out with PERS, but you may enter into contract negotiations with them, find out how much it is during the term of the executive office. There are ways of doing that. So I wanted them to advise you sort of a menu of what you can do with this position before you walk into it, so you can select and go in and form. Thank you. Then I'll, I'll, I'll I was going to say, but will that impact what you just got through saying about wanting to put the RFQ out by next week? So uh, we will explain. Okay. The separate parts of this, uh, and then the resolution of the issue of quote organizational location unquote uh, will be work through before the, the recruiter starts the recruitment process. Okay. They have to have that as part of the recruitment process, but they don't need to have it to actually get into a contract with us and okay. get that formality, work formality uh, out of the way so they can start taking advantage of the rest of the year. Thank you. And, and Ken, um, a couple of thoughts that I had I wanted to share with you. On page 109, the second group, Desired Skills, Whenever I see experience in writing grant applications to an agency that's dependent on money, which most of them are, I, I see that very, very important. And I don't want to get into micromanaging now and suggest that be item number 13 up above. But what I did want to suggest, the 12 items up above, you know, it says critical skills. That critical, and I'm just sharing this with, with our committee here, my, my perspective, critical is not, does not mean required or mandatory. We've just given them a little more importance in the job than the five items down below. But I think it's very important that a person can, looking at your RFQ, looking at whatever, understands that these are areas that the board has identified to be helpful, necessary kind of traits. There may well be a person that walks in that has six or seven traits out of the 17. Somebody else that comes in with nine traits out of the 17. But because of a background or experience or a combination of things or the mentor or, you know, whatever. So I just want to make sure that we're not, when we use critical, it doesn't mean they must have these 12 or you will not be considered. Right. Okay? Good, good point. That's exactly correct. It is the, the framework within which to seek applicants, interview, make make selections, I think um, we, we will make it very clear that that, is, that a successful candidate may not have all of these. In fact, if you have a candidate that has all of these skills, right. you could add walking on water, probably. Um, <laughs> but, um, but it's a way of, of evaluating. This will be the basis of evaluating. My, my land use aide, Roland, he brought up a, a good point. He said, we want to screen applicants, applicants in, not out. And I thought that was an interesting way to, to describe that. So if that's OK with everyone, I just wanted to add that in there in, in your notes. Any other comments or thoughts? Along that line, yes, I do. Yeah. Because we had discussed uh, under desired your um, number one, we had discussed that, that we had thought that was critical for this yeah. agency. So I don't know. There's some on your critical that I don't think are critical. <laughs> so going along with that line, to me, grant writing and land use skills are things that we want in this in this position. So I don't want it to be where I've had experience and I work 
you know, in a corporate world, where if you have a, a, a recruiter that's going to ram someone down your throat because they say it meets A, B, and C, and you really can't argue with them. I don't want us to get into that kind of position with these two categories, so. Uh, the board may wish to merge the two lists and find uh, into one list and call it not critical, but desired. Uh, yeah, that that's fine. I, I would be happy to make that motion. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Is there a second on, on I'll that? I'll second it. <laughs> and, and that's great. Any further discussion on this uh, agenda item? Commissioner Campus. I wouldn't mind making another. Board member Campus. Uh, thanks. Uh, suggestion. I want this person to be forward thinking too, not just look at the current tasks and not. Um, and not see the potential future of the organization and how it's going to work. You probably want somebody who's at least looking to the future and not just on what the tasks are that's in front of he or she. So um, I don't know if you want to add that forward thinking. Uh, I don't know how one gauges that, but it came across my mind. Sure. Yeah. I see nodding. Is there a general consensus? To include that in there, thank you. We'll work something on that. I probably had that to work. Yeah, I was just going to say you can add it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sure we could come up with 25 or 30 things if we keep doing this around. But <laughs> it, gives, it gives a general idea here. I still can't do PowerPoint. But anyway, anything else, anybody? Nope. And so I think we had a motion and a second and no further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. That passes unanimously, and we go on to item number nine, which is a report from the interim executive officer, Ken Schreiber. I appreciate that, and my wife appreciates it. Um, the um, variety of the permanent signing ceremony is now at 10 o'clock, not 11 o'clock. This is uh, but it is not going to be 10 o'clock. Okay. And the location is the same. We will be getting invited. Yeah, I'm going to be able to There's a group of public information officers and others yeah. that are um, working on this and bless them. Party planning is a very valuable trait. We're very happy to have some of this. So it's, it's 10 o'clock on our tour, Thursday the 3rd at and today. And the Kansas Advantage will take the advantage of easy access off of 101 Compton Road, paved parking, paved area for holding the ceremony. And uh, even if it rains, you can handle it there rather than the field location for the Thank you. Excuse me, board member counts. Yeah, I, 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 um, I and the mayor would like to attend, except that. Uh, the mayor and I are going to be in Washington, D.C. from the 1st to the 3rd. Um, I had sent, in, 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 sent for my aid, I sent uh, word that we could, neither me nor the mayor could attend, we, although we'd like to on October, but October 3rd wouldn't work for either one of us. And uh, I don't know uh, how complicated it is to go to make it Friday rather than um, Thursday, but um, you know, I, I I just wanted you to know the mayor will will, will not be able to attend, and he wanted to attend, um, and so and so. Uh, you have Councilman Calra. Yes. Okay. Ken, what? It will be quite complicated. I, I don't think Friday is likely to work. There is a uh, another major habitat conservation. Then at UC Davis that day, that any number of people come in to visit them on Thursday or complain to go on Friday. Um, the, um, it, it took all sorts of negotiations with the Habitat agencies, with the wildlife agencies, to come down to a date that they all of their all of their okay. Um, okay. I guess I'll, I'll just have to, I'll go to you for, for your advice. Sure. How many individuals and groups do you have? coming on that date. Can I clarify that something quickly? Sure. When you say signing ceremony, does, as chair and chair, we both have to be there to sign? There is no document. That's what I wanted to know. <laughs> OK. We're part of the planning of the ceremony in 2005. We ended up with a piece of board about 
three and a half by five <laughs> on there. And we still had, you know, and it has the signatures of the various jurisdictional names and then the signatures there. It, it, it is a symbolic okay. event. It is a celebration event. It is a photo oh, event. Um, it is held in very, very high regard by Fish and Wildlife Service in Sacramento. They're bringing eight people. Eight people. Wow. Fish and Wildlife bringing eight people? It's bringing eight people. But this is good. This is the big can, can this is this regard as such a high priority event. Yeah. They have all sorts of people. Who all do you have confirmed? And then mem Member Schmidt. I have not seen a list of confirmed, and no. I think we have not sent, we have sent out a save the date type yeah. email. We will be sending out very shortly now a RSVP uh, email to get, get some of those responses. Okay, right. Well, I just want to say I certainly empathize with uh, Board Member Camus. Uh, board members Lazada and myself also will not be able to attend. Um, and uh, for all the years we've put into this, it's kind of a shame. However, I think it should move forward at that time. I think there's just too much going on, and I'm, I'm just really happy it's going to happen. That's more important than me being there. I agree. Um, and the director, Kennedy, will be there. Uh, standing in for us, and so. And, and I'm not talking on my behalf because I barely did anything for this uh, agency to, to take forward. It's just the mayor, and I know he, he didn't ask me to speak on his behalf, but I just thought since he did a lot of work, I don't know. But. Well, okay. I wasn't thinking that I would be able to go, but I will. I will make sure that I'm there. If we're not, <laughs> I would like <laughs> to have some people there. <laughs> so I will. I will make an effort. But it would be better to move it to for me. But I will make an effort to go ahead and go. And you're doing the RSVPs when? Uh, we'll talk about this at management team tomorrow. But I would hope that by early, very early next week, something goes out. I am very Okay. Have you? You did a save the date before with the implementation board and the governing board. So that's how I've got it, I guess, on my yeah, calendar. It, well, it, I have an email list of a hundred names, probably. And we sent the same data. The there were stakeholder group members. There were a lot of people in the public who participated in the process, uh, followed the process, and wanted to be aware of the process. And asked staff people to follow the group to be on the list. So it, it, it has grown into a, a rather notable list of people. Now, I'm not saying all of them are going to come. But uh, that was the best way of getting a broad message out there from the city. Okay. I think the sooner you get the RSVP list out, the better you'll have an idea mm -hmm. of who can attend and who cannot attend. And if you see something going south on that particular thing, then we may need to make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I certainly understand we can't all be everywhere. And it, it, uh, you'll, you'll never have a date that, that does that. But if you find you know this many people, mm -hmm can make that date, and I think we need to look for, for an alternative. But other than that, that'll, that'll go forward. Okay. Um, anything else, Ken, on your report? Uh, a couple other things. Um, insurance uh, will authorize me to sign contracts up to $20,000. Insurance coverage can actually came in at right around $4,000, with the caveat of not expecting it to be that low in the future as the agency is standing. So the very rudimentary nature of the agency in terms of what we own, the property uh, we occupy, we probably don't own any property. Insurance this year on it is, is, is well below what we had put in the budget for. Um, just wanted to note on Caltrans, um, and I think this is a, an indication of, of, of things we're going to see more of, which is agencies on Caltrans say, oh, you have a head of Caltrans. You can make our life happy. And so we had both of a group of us, and we had also the Caltrans staff figuring out how, they, how this can make their life easier. And so that was the benefits of the habitat plan. I did want to note the Northern California workshop on November 20th. Uh, it is, I think, my best one day um, training workshop type event on the habitat plan in California. And it sells out every year. About 170 people in the job. Um, let me provide a brief update, and in the future I will provide uh, a written update on cash flow. Um, part of this process, as Supervisor Lawson had noted very, very early on, in the last days on the meeting, was unusual, and we were going to have to just trust and move ahead, et cetera. 
Um, part of that trusting is that the money, that there would be money in the bank in the reasonable future, even if we're making contracts before the money is on hand. Um, I had checks on my desk for two projects, pre-planned projects uh, that use the plan. Um, both, well, one pre-planned project from the Water District that's eighty-six thousand three hundred dollars. Also, the Water District's unallocated prepayment and mitigation funds. What that means is that the Water District has some timbers that we will offer up five hundred thousand dollars of future mitigation funds for drawing down uh, ahead of our project. And 165000 of that is in a check on the desk. So basically, we have a quarter million ready to go in the bank. And I'll be meeting with Santa Clara County early next week. We've got to get it actually deposited correctly. Um, and we've incurred some costs so which have not been paid. Um, a variety of invoices, um, not, not stupendous, and we'll chew very much into that, that quarter million. And I might add, there's a, another project. Um, in one of the hill residential project that has $324,000 in an escrow account, and I will be triggering that payment in the next, uh, won't be tomorrow. It'll be, hopefully, I'll that will So the bottom line is, um, money is arriving, and it's definitely sufficient to cover the costs, and we're hearing also that uh, from local staff and from property developers, about what they're thinking about after October 14th. So we get calls about how do I calculate this and we want to move ahead, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I just wanted to provide that, that overview um, because, it, again, it's an unusual situation with a startup agency. Um, I think we pay money to do everything, but we will soon have everything. Off, off your desk and in the bank. This is not even in the mail, it's on my desk. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? All right. I think all we need probably is a, well, we received the report. Do we need a motion to receive the report? Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> motion to, to accept receive. the report. Motion <laughs> made. Second. <laughs> Discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. All righty. So we're going to adjourn. No. no. Thank you. Yeah. Under future implementation board initiated agenda items. Yes. <laughs> I would like to talk about whether or not we need to have a meeting for December. And at this point, we don't know what we're going to be doing in October, but generally speaking, I try not to. There's always extra meetings on other obligations, so I'm asking, do, can we not? Can we all decide not to have a meeting, or can we put it on the agenda for next month to decide whether we have a meeting or not? We're going to require next month for meeting schedules, and say that there's a waiver on that because we don't have any occasional December meeting. They were never successful, and also the December meeting were canceled. Yeah. That is probably. Okay. Any further comment, discussion? None. Well, we had, we're now adjourning the implementation board meeting. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. And Brian, you were right. It was fairly short. <laughs> no, I like it when it's short. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I responded back to the issue group. I said, this would be nice to be able to get two days in a row off. Did you come all the way from San Jose? Yeah, then he said, five or less of my time. Yeah, yeah. On those two days. How did you do that? Did you? Oh, I came down. I came down.